Um, I just started recording now. I had to like mod Kaz so that we don't get any uh, unruly stuff happening, you know? I'm trying to keep my, my chat tame and no, I just don't want only, uh, not only fans, only follows or whatever they call the follow bots. I don't need followers. I have Kaz. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is reboot Linux. Um, ba, 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 ba. I don't have time for going through. Yeah. Do we start KX? Uh, all right, well, let's just see if that works. Will that handle reboots? Nope, it did not. Uh, let's just see if it handles. See, I don't like this part. I don't like where it just sits there and does nothing. Very uncharismatic, if you ask me. Um, let's just quickly see if that's like if it works now. Restart. Nope. Um, so yeah, let's talk a bit about where we've been and where we're going. So. I'm getting pretty good at writing assembly, I think. Okay-ish, it works. Um, a lot better than I thought I'd fare. Like to the point I'm switching up DOS and C code. Let me just quickly try this. KXIC. Um, we want to load. Um, what image? Um, Alpha X86. So it would be, um, we use command line. Um, and then I think it would be, what's the image? Boot VM Linux. And I think it's the NRD. Um, in our D dot image. All right, let's try that. So now if we do system control KXIC, it should boot faster. Or not at all. Perfect. Um, that's exactly what I wanted. Anything on serial output? All right, well, I tried to fly close to the fire. And I got burned. Okay. All right. So first thing we're going to do is try fixing up that um, printf code we wrote last time. Um, cause I wasn't satisfied about that. So let's see, let's go, um, excuse me, why not open terminal? Yeah. So it would be desktop bot, um, drive C, uh, let's do tmux, vim, drive C, code, bot, and I think it was log.nas. Yeah. So um, we have our log printf thing and we're using all these registers. How's my day been? Good. Um, but we probably don't need to really store these if sprintf is a variable function. Um, that's not. Let's, dump those. 
Um, the only thing that we would probably need is AX. However, um, I read something that said that CX is preserved. Oh, SN printf clobbers those. All right. Um, so that is kind of complicated um, because SN printf uses CX and SI. And we also want to use that for log general. Although, do we need that? Um, log printf gives us a string. Um, and then we call that, and then we probably get that back from SN printf nice, don't we? In fact, we're just preserving those registers here. Yeah, we don't need that. Um, and in fact, we can just, um, where's log f printf? So log f printf, uh, we call that, we get CX and we get SI. So this clobbers CX and SI. Clobbers AX, CX, SI. Um, SI is a bit troublesome. Um, but this should be like, yeah, just a variable function. So it's not, it like, I guess it doesn't expect any registers to be clobbered. But yeah, let's just do a little bit of trickery here. What does SN printf do? Okay, I don't think we need this CX thing. And the ret, we can just put that in. Oh, we can't. Um, we don't have a stack. We gotta push that. Um, but I think, yeah, um, this will club a CX, AX, and C, um, SI, and that's okay because it's a variable function, I think. Um, an SN printf nice clobbers CX. Um, so I don't think we actually need to worry about CX and SI too much here, no? Um, because it's assumed to be clobbered, I think. Um, I don't know if I'm talking smack here. This is just, let's see, does it work? Close, all right, yeah, that's right. Um, edit drive C bot, sorry, it would be in code bot. Then further, um, it'd be in bot CPP. It's already open. Oh, um, that's fine. So let's just find, where did I call open? We're gonna have to dump that anyway. So let's just make that a, uh, a thing. Close has not been defined. All right. My day has been good. Okay, we need to run our test server. Nice. Yeah, so I think it assumes that we're gonna clobber stuff because um, the calling convention is that um, it clobbers anything and returns AX. So it clobbers everything, returns in AX. It, part, it uses the stack for arguments and stuff, I think. All right, so that's fine. Um, we can remove CX and SI there, but what about this printf return? This is tricky because um, we're calling SN printf nice there. And SN printf says that we use AX and CX. So what we probably could actually do is just put the return in DX. And just do that. Because those, like my calling convention that I use is that I don't clobber anything. And once again, big crashies. And that works fine, it seems. 
Do I like jumps? They're okay. And that can just be pop DX. Um, let's also look at our SN printf thing. Um, we pop CX there and we push CX. So why are we pushing CX there? Is that because we use return? And why do we have the base pointer here? Um, maybe we should optimize this a little bit. Um, let's do away with the base pointer maybe. Or are we just doing base pointers now? It's unclear to me. Um, I don't think we need base pointers if we're going to be, um, I don't know. So what's the base pointer here? It should be equal to the stack pointer. So let's just do SP, um, but pushing the base pointer is gonna cause trouble there. And then we also have CX here. So let's pop CX, put that in DX and do jump DX there. And then that means that these are going to be pulled down. Those were the arguments passed to SN printf. So that would be the buffer, so SP plus zero and SP plus two. See if this works, whatever. Invalid effective address. Oh, that's right. We do need the BP, but we could just put that in a register, right? Um, move BP SP and that clobbers it. That's fine. Is it fine? No, because we're clobbering that. Okay, yeah, so very smart code here by me. Um, but we have the push CX there and we have the pop CX. So let's turn that into a jump DX. Although, no, that's, that's not right either. Yeah, okay, so I did it right here. Um, so we don't clobber, we only clobber AX and CX. Um, but here we clobber everything. And that's fine. Um, so let's quickly refer to the manual just to show that this is um, flash at, I want to edit that out a little bit. Um, I'm using X11. So every time like I tab to something, um, it causes like a flash and corrupted data. I'm not sure if that has like personal stuff in it. All right, so let's go to the Whatcom documentation. Actually, I have an even better idea. Hang on. Uh, ba -ba -ba. All good? All right, so I'm using this screen just as dedicated. Um, that, so I can switch to all the tabs I want and this will always be here. That's smart. I'm a smart person today. Let's look at C guide. Calling convention. Um, so we're going to look at the calling convention. So here we have 32-bit um, only. We're not using that. We're not using that. We're looking for calling conventions. Um, calling conventions just specify, you know, um, what you pass to a function and what that function will clobber. Calling conventions for, for non... Yeah, okay. Passing arguments using registers. Um, so what call unlike Linux and stuff, um, uses registers to call stuff. Unlike 32-bit Linux, I mean. Um, some stuff in the stack is passed as a register and then dumped on the stack.
Um, it looks like stuff is converted to an int, which is which makes sense because it's not compressing it. Um, if it's four bytes, then it will use a register pair. If it's a float, um, then it will use all the registers and everything else is put on the stack. So that's kind of like um, an algorithm. Uh, it doesn't specify how structs are passed. Arguments such as structures are almost always passed on the stack. And then you have the size and registers there used for what comes calling. Um, enumerated types. Um, interfacing to assembly stuff. That's pretty good. That makes sense. Um, but we're not doing that. We're using printf. So we're going to have to variable number of arguments. All arguments are passed on the stack. Uh, those arguments are just passed as, um, those arguments are passed as describing, but what about clobbering? Hmm. All right, it says so here. Interfacing to assembly language stuff. Um, let's see, return address. Argument three, well, that's pretty cool. Um, Register SP cannot be used as a base register to address the third argument on the stack. BP is normally used to address arguments on the stack. On entry to a function, a register BP is set to point to the stack, but before doing so, we must save the contents. Yep. Um, all 8086 registers must be saved on entry and restored on exit, except those used to pass arguments to return values and AX which is considered a scratch register. So should I... Is my code perhaps wrong? I might be wrong. Um, I read somewhere else. AX is the scratch register. So could it just be that I'm wrong here? Let's keep reading. 8 byte values except structures are to be returned in registers AX, BX, CX and DX. All right, let's keep looking. So MS call here um, shows that it clobbers these registers here. Um, so we can describe that uh, functions, uh, that registers are modified by a function. So perhaps we could do that instead. Um, I mean, I guess my code is wrong. So let's fix that. Oh, that's sad. Um, clubbers, AXCX, SI. 
Um, so it's okay that when club is AX, that's fine. That's implied. CX and SI. Although is SN printf, that returns it in AX and CX. Yeah, it's fine. Um, pop AX, can we just pop to memory locations? That seems like something I shouldn't be able to do, but let's try it anyway. Um, and then we just move them back. Print F ref. Well, if I could type. Yep. Yeah. Operation size. Yeah, okay. So pop AX. So I guess my code was correct. Stack based colon. Yeah. Um, that seems fine. And then it has the 32 bit stuff. All right. So it is time to start adding the functions to make it so that we can open and close logs. So what we're just going to do here is define int open log and int close log. Um, now we could move a bunch of this to C. Uh, to assembly. You know, let's do that, whatever. Um, a log handle, what do we need that for? We don't. Um, if we can't open the log, we will put the printf there, I suppose. Unable to open bot log. All right, there. So let's go back to our log and let's define a function. Um, do we use f flush still? No, we just use sn printf here. Um, we don't need printf there. Uh, we do need get and then, uh, which would be character get and then character um, name. I think that's what it would be. Um, so log printf, write log, write space. Um, log general. A bit weird. Oh, I see. Yep. All right. So open log. Global open log. Um, let's put a comment at the start on what this actually is. Int open log void. Um, so it takes no arguments. So let's move, uh, let's push the base pointer. Um, move the stack pointer to the base pointer. Then we will um, pop the base pointer. And we will return. Um, and so right now we're just going to do move AX five and close log um, will be the same. We'll just put an error there. Um, do we have it written down here? Um, actually, we'll just make that a void. 
um, void close log. Um, there. So that seems fine. We have the prologue. Um, so AX is, yeah, we don't have anything. So let's just see if this works. Close log is an undefined reference. Because I forgot to put an underscore after it. Actually, we should probably put a um, thing here too for our um, header, I guess. Our log printf uh, function, so that we know what it actually does. Uh, Okay, so open log, we're gonna call get env. So we're going to move ax, and we're gonna be appointed to our character. So that would be um, uh, bot log env. And we'll put that down here. Bot log env, and this is going to be a bot log. Um, then we're going to call get env. Um, and then we're going to move AX. Um, we're going to check if AX is zero. So success is going to be down here. Um, jump greater than zero or jump not zero. Um, success. Should I do a compare for that? Compare AX. No, that would be test AX, yeah. Um, so if we get a success, we will return error code one. Otherwise we will move AX five and pop BP and return. Um, done, we'll just name that done. That seems reasonable to me. Valid combination of opcode and operands. Test AX AX, test AX zero. Compare AX to zero and then we'll just jump um, not equal the success there. I don't know what the difference between test and compare is. Um, let's also the return code there. So we get RC1. Um, so what if we do bot? We get RC5 and an extra new line, um, which isn't that great, that's fine. Um, so in that case, success shows RC1, and we get that in test bot where the um, file name is set. So what do we need to do next? We need to terminate the value. We need to open it. Um, so we're actually going to just do, we're going to, Hmm. Yeah, we'll refactor this a little bit later. So we're going to find the DOS open file API. Um, I think we had it in history. Open file. DOS interrupt here. Might have also been here. I think this was the site. No, that site is pathetic. Um, table of contents. There was also another one, um, interrupt services. I think it was this. Yeah, so DOS services, create a file using FCB. Um, I think it was also open file. So we need to, yeah, open file using handle or create file using handle. 
So uh, what if we're going to have to figure out if the file doesn't exist, then we're going to have to create it. But if it already exists, we're going to have to open it. Create file using handle. We can't use this one because if it already exists, it's truncated. Um, this will open it. Um, and open access mode. But if it doesn't exist, then I guess it will fail. So we need to, I guess, hmm. Okay, uh, can we create file? I know that's a race condition waiting to happen, but this is DOS. Um, So we'll try to create a file. And we will return the value of that. So move AX5. Um, in the success branch, we have AX, which is going to be our file. Um, so move AX to, I think it's DS, that register. Um, CX is attribute. I don't know what attribute is. Um, let's grab. Then we will have to test with the carry flag for the error code. Um, it should be success environment. Test carry flag for error. Um, this should be AH5B, which is open file. Um, move DS there. Um, CX is an attribute. So that would probably be defined over here. Um, AL is the open access mode. Um, so what is an what is a attribute here? Maybe this file um, create ms dos there ms dos seven um, ms dos uh, create file int. We're gonna have to be doing int twenty one in a second. Um, so int twenty one. Uh, zero twenty one MS DOS um, int twenty one of five B. I think it's five B. Yep. Let's just check these out. Oh boy. That's a that's a lot to take in. Five B create new file. Um, file attribute C number 1420 at AH4301. What? What? AX4301. Um, all right. We'll go back to the interrupts page. Int21. Uh, four, three, oh, one. She mod. Okay. So bit fields. Um, I think we just need, uh, we don't need to set any of those. Um, so we'll move CX with zero. Um, CX is zero. And then we want to test the carry flag. So how do we do that? You would use JC or um, JNC. So we'll do JC um, uh, success. Uh, this is weird because it's okay if it doesn't um, create. 
let's just write success create and then we move ax1 and then if it fails um we just go jump done that seems fine um so it'll try and create the file and if it's if it's good it'll return say one two three four if it doesn't it will return the error code given by dos okay try that Label alone online. Yep, that is an error. Didn't Internet Explorer die months ago? Months ago. Didn't it die years ago? Wasn't it on life support and they finally turned it off? They finally had to let it go. Um, looks like this is frozen. Interesting. Um, probably should not have done that there. That's not good. Uh, I can understand what happened there. I uh, lobbed AX there. And didn't it? Didn't it die with Internet Explorer Seven? Like everything after that, nobody wanted to use it. That was the death of it. And then it's just denial. Okay, so that's frozen. So we move AX to DS. Then we move um, 5B and CX0. Then we do int 21. Um, then we return yeah what's what's happened here um let's see what we're doing in the debugger open up wd window modules let's go down to log and let's um break here actually let's just go run the cursor All right it completed running and it was very loud um just turn that down maybe linux will remember that um oh i need to set debug equals wd Um, yeah, Internet Explorer has always been um, awful. Um, so let's go to um, F7 here. And it completed running. I don't know why. Um, let's just go. Uh, window application. Unable to open bot log. Okay. All oh, right, I set the debug, but I still have to run bot test. All right. Um, so let's go to window, uh, modules. Yeah, HTTPS is probably, um, that's the compatibility limit on websites these days. It's no longer like old HTML and stuff. It's just like, how old is the browser to support HTTPS? What editor is this right now? This is Open Whatcom's debugger um, or IDE. So this is just the debugger and my IDE is just my text editor. Although Open Whatcom does have like an actual IDE that I installed for Windows. Um, but I'm running it on Linux and it looks kind of trashy. Um, I actually used it to help someone debug their project. Um, and I can see this being okay back in the day. Anyway, so we're about to do int 21. Um, Open Whatcom, you'll have to check that out. Are you making something in DOS? What's happening? I would not recommend using 
open Whatcom for non-retro stuff. Um, unless you have retro code. I'm just zipping up my jacket. Zip, zip, zip. Um, so, makes you want to do something like that? Nice. Um, so, oh, we got to success create. No. So I just stepped through that. Let's look at our registers real quick. Um, we got the return value 02 with the carry flag of one. So we have error two, but why is that freezing my, why is that freezing things? Pop BP, turn. So it's not freezing stuff, is it? File. Run, go. No, it's a... Uh, check the call stack for this. It's trying to run the TCP buffer? Why are you, why are you over there? What are you doing here? You should not be here. That is not a place for, for that. It should go return one. Oh, am I initializing the, it doesn't make much sense. I didn't do anything here. Um, it might be because I already have the program running or it's already hooked an interrupt or something and crashed. Let's see. see. This is frozen now. I don't like that. Um, so set debug equals WD but test space, 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 and it returns one. And then it exits and then it hits the debugger. And uh, that seems fine. What? So is the debugger modifying what it's doing? Um, printf open log. This seems like a stack issue. This seems like I'm doing something weird with the stack, but I'm not, am I? Oh. I am, I think. I don't know. Hang on, what's the prelude for other stuff here? Push BP, move BP, SP. And then later on we pop BP. Yeah, so this looks fine to me. It's logic, yeah. Um, you know, we don't actually even have to have much of the terminal open for this. See, that's fine. The wonders of assembly programming. Um, is it squishing my registers? Let's see. Um, so let's go to windows, modules, log, um, and let's just run here. Um, let's look at our registers. So, and then we're going to do the interrupt. That sets AX, FL, and C1. And we jump done. Um, yep, move SP, BP. Uh, what? I just set the stack to zero. Are you kidding me? That's not good. What? Move, what's happened here? Why is the stack zero? You got any kombucha today? 
Yeah, but I'm not going to be drinking it on stream. Um, my family's been enjoying it. I'm finally living the kombucha life, you know. Why buy store-bought kombucha when you can just make your own every two weeks? It's put two hours and effort into it. Um, so push BP. So I'm, I'm missing something here really bad because if we push... You didn't know C++ would work on DOS. Thought maybe you could use something basic or something from that time frame. So it's extremely interesting, but you can use C++ and C and a lot of stuff on DOS. Um, I think you can use JavaScript um, nowadays, which is pretty cool. Um, the limit is mainly memory. Um, it's JDOS. I can't find it. I looked for like a second. Um, but back in the day, yes, you, you could. Um, and it's pretty good. Um, it is a little bit weird. Is It is a little bit weird. I'm writing 16-bit code here, and I'm writing it in assembly. Well, a mix of C++ and C and assembly. JS DOS Pokemon. Um, but right now I've managed to I've managed to make it so that my stack pointer is is ruined. Um, why is this ruined? Push base pointer, pop base pointer. That sets the base pointer. Why is it why is it messing with the stack pointer? That's very weird. Um, you know, do we, I wouldn't debug this stuff on an actual machine. Um, if I was doing actual DOS development, I would not be doing this because you see how many times I'm having to restart this. Imagine doing that, but like, a hundred times slower. Um, it would probably make me a more careful programmer though. But I don't know. <clears throat> I guess you just like get a second computer then. All right. Um, when will we, when I, when will I make you a Pokemon clone? Never. Um, so our stack pointer is three F eight, eight. Can we go space? Um, and where we've, we've hit an interrupt. That's not good. Space, space, it hits an interrupt. It hits a break point. Um, that's not good. Something really strange is happening here. And I don't think I've seen it happen before with my with my horrible programming. Um, let's just, let's look at our registers and our stack. So let's open up just the registers, I guess. Uh, and let's look at the stack. So we're currently at 3F88. <coughs> and that's fine. Let's run, let's step into, trace into. So we push the base pointer on the stack and that's 3F90. So we should see that show up here and the stack pointer increment to 3F88. Sorry, decrement to 3F84 because the stack grows downwards. I don't understand why the stack grows downwards in computers. It, it makes no sense. Um, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, so we move the stack pointer to our base pointer. He attempted to eat some applesauce today. You ta it tasted rotten, had some fizz, so I basically had your kombucha too. <laughs> no. So our base pointer, um, which was previously zero, that's a little bit strange. Um, why was it zero? 
Was it zero a second ago? Did anyone see that? Was anyone watching? Um, the base pointer should not be zero. Um, so we move AX, it's not zero now, which is good. We call get env, um, we compare AX, that's our string. So if we go to data, uh, memory at AX, it shows that we've got the correct environment variable. It's above your pay. Yeah, um, if you're writing 8086 assembly like this, this is, this is the fun you're going to experience. Um, so we did not create it successfully. And the return value is two based in AX. And so now we're going to this move stack pointer base pointer wait a second did i change the code but not recompile i think i've found my like my demon um i was moving the stack i was moving the base pointer to the stack pointer i don't know why was i doing that anywhere else no um, that's okay, it still freezes though. Which tells me, um, probably nothing. Let's just double check. Yep, yep, yep. New version of DOSBox X is due to come out soon. Hey, Eternal Wild Fox, what's up? Um come it's due to come out soon uh, i guess i'm plugging dosbox x now because i do some development with it um has some cool features really underappreciated but this is like it has true type font support so like this is like actual fonts if i set this to like be DOS stuff, that's what it looks like. But if I set it to be like actual fonts, it looks so much better. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Hopefully we can get to the mystery of what what's happening here. So if we go to CPU registers, yeah, our base pointer is zero. Why, what, come, what are you doing? Why is our base pointer zero? That's so weird. Um, I don't think, should the base pointer be zero at main? Is this advertising for computer time? <laughs> Just, I, I got the computer time web host advertising. Oh my God, I tried to open it but it's just a big javascript link all right this file was not retrieved by teleport pro because it started rest yeah okay um computer time hosting i get no spam junk mail filter oh this is fantastic um oh i love this I love all of this. Um, free speech and spam and virus filtering. Um, I love it. Uh, there's even a women before women in computing was political. Yeah. Um, Church of Reality home email. Uh, what's the pricing structure here? Do we have to pricing? What does it cost? Um, Ten dollars a month. HP, MySQL, Perl, all the stuff that comes with Fedora Linux includes up to one gig of disk space and five hundred megabytes of transfer a day. I don't know if that's great. If that's a great deal anymore. Um, 
let's just have a quick look. Does this tell us what version of stuff it's running? Um, headers, server, ah, just Apache, just Apache. Um, is it Apache? Like, I'd like to know the versions of things you're running. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, like, I'm not sure if this is accident. Like, there's two cases. This is like, you know, it's meant to look retro, but it's a new service. Or it's a really old service. And it's still alive somehow. Well, they've got a picture of PHP 4 there. Oh, no. It's fine. Um, but this website is fantastic. This mirrors of old Linux dot old slash Linux dot old slash docs slash interrupt slash int dash HTML. So old Linux dot org slash Linux dot org slash doc slash interrupts has this. Um, inter 61. So 86 bugs. Like to remember if I'm running Apache or Engine, Nginx. Man, remember when you could like dig around directory structures of websites and be like, wow, there's files here. You can just go to a website and you can get files from it. Imagine going to a website and there being files and you can download the files. Wow. But yeah, that's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, you love files. Um, so where were we? Um, I think we were in, I guess I lost, I lost track. Um, docs, any other docs here? Wait, yeah, docs. Um, interrupts, interrupts HTML zero. Is that a different one? All right. So this, this website just has everything. Um, does this have an index dot? Hey, oh no. Oh no. Oh, I thought it froze my browser for a second. Index dot HTM. Is it going to load? Oh dear. The simplicity of the good old days. This doesn't seem that good old to me. If you ask me, this seems kind of, uh, sucks. <laughs> a three hour rant on web zero. Um, no, there's no, there's no rant on web zero. Oh God, I've, I've lost. Okay, we'll go to the interrupts page. Here we go. In HTML. So this has all the interrupts. Wow. Amazing. I've never seen so many. Did I grab my vegetables? Yeah. If he's called Vegeta, then you have to call it veg vegetables, I guess. Um, all right, so let's step into this. So we push BP, we move the stack pointer to BP. I don't know why we're doing that. We're not using the base pointer, but whatever. Um, on 8086, you can't address by like the stack pointer. You have to use the base pointer. Very strange, would not recommend that architecture. My feet are cold, holy cow. Um, I'll, I'll just power through it. We've got like two hours left, it's fine. It probably won't get colder. In fact, it's like, I could open my window. Like to let some light in, That's, that can warm me up a bit. Now I'm squinting at my computer. All right, um, so we call int 21. 
We're done. We pop BP. And we return. And we return one. Uh, we call exit. And we're in C start. And then we interrupt three. And then we jump to zero. So that seems like it should work. Um, why is it freeze? Why are you freeze? Why do you do that? Wait, is that open Whatcom make freezing? What's happening? Um, edit bot test uh, dot bat. Let's just quickly comment out W make. I think that's how you comment stuff out. No, you put RAM in front of it for some reason. Um, save and exit. Let's see, bot test. Nope, it does in fact freeze. Go to the, we'll have to start the debugger maybe. Um, Dustbox X has a debugger. It's okay. Uh, that might give us a hint of what's happening. Um, let's do source, sorry, DOSBox X, source, DOSBox X, conf, DOSBox. I don't need that. All right, um, and let's just edit bot test again. And add the stuff for compiling back. Start the debugger and see where we are. Um, what? We're in the same place. It's trying to do interrupt one, I think. Um, I don't remember how to run this. I think it's like step, step. Next, run, continue. Um, so it's stuck there for some reason. Not cool. Um, and that only happens if I call interrupt one there, uh, interrupt 21. Like what if I just do that? Um, we don't call the DOS stuff. What if, what happens then, huh? Still freezes. It must be my broken code that I thought worked. Um, what the hell? What am I doing? Why am I moving DS to AX? What? Of course that's not going to work. I'm um, create file using handle DSDX. Yeah. All right. That should be DX. Why did I do that? Move DX AX. Um, and I think we're supposed to push anything we clobber. Um, so we're going to push BP. Um, we're going to push I think we DX and we push AX. No, we push DX and CX. And then we will pop them in reverse order. There we go. All right. I was setting the data segment to something in insane. It's insane. All right, so it's returning an error now, one, two, three, four. Um, and that says, I think error, I think error two, it, it returns one, two, three, four, if we have success creating it, which, oh, okay. So it successfully created it. And then we get error. 80 if it's already existing, I think. So, um, error 
80 equals already exists. Um, in in that case, group in it. Stand, right? So now we should delete the bot log. Bot test log. Mm -hmm. What's RC80? So we're going to have to look at some error codes, DOS error codes. Um, oh, what assembly did you do? Uh, what's 80 in... Um, What's hex 80, 50? File already exists. All right. So we're going to have to compare against that. Um, so we're going to compare AX 0 times 80. All right, 0 times 50. Already exists. Um, if it's not equal, then we will just um, move to done. Otherwise, we're going to have to open the file instead. Um, that seems fine x86 so 32 bit or 16 bit which cpu that kind of stuff um then we'll just retry opening with uh 3d uh 3d uh i think it's 3d01 Wait, do I have to set the mode when I create the file to? Um, create file. So we create the file and now we also have to check if that errors. You started on school from microcontroller, you forgot which CU that was, CPU. Ah, so I think the only microcontrollers were the um, 8086 range. And uh, well, there's a lot of smoke outside my house. I'm sure that's fine though. Um, yeah, so this thing, this was used as a microcontroller. I think, um, so I'm not sure. It's a weird microcontroller because it doesn't have like embedded SRAM. Um, though I do know there was like microcontroller versions of it. Um, okay, so let's see. We move AX301 and what does it do if it fails? Well, we're going to check if it fails. Um, Let's rename that to have file and success invent to have environment. So wait, if CF is not set, we jump to have file. Otherwise we jump to done. So we should always get one, two, three, four now as the return value. Um, so one, two, three, four, um, let's go delete bot test.log and we should get one, two, three, four. So we always have one, two, three, four. That's good news for us. 
Um, actually, we can probably just... Um, jump carry done. So now we're going to have to seek to the end of the file. Um, seek position, I think it was position, length. Um, it's definitely in here, but I just don't remember what it's called. Set file position. Get file size, set. Um, it's going to be a Twitch bot. A bit weird saying out loud. Um, Seek file. Um, all right. So now we're just going to call a DOS Twitch bot. Yes. Um, I've been working on it since 2019. That's not, ac that's actually different from the others. Yeah, so I'm just doing logging now, but it also, right now it can connect to an IRC server and respond to pings. Like I have a test program here and you can kind of see that uh, um, it will send you the password and username and then it will respond to pings and stuff. Um, but I wanna get logging, logging set up because I do plan to run this on an actual DOS hardware thing. And so I need to have actual logging. Um, so, have file. Now we have to seek. So move AX42. Uh, we wanna go to end of file, so it's 4202. Uh, move BX, AX. We'll do that here because that's where um, the file handle is already. Um, let's just write that down there. Um, yes, I will use FreeDOS to host it. Um, I actually do have something I've been trying to repair, but it does run FreeDOS. Um, and we will use networking on it. So yeah, real hardware. The only issue is that I'm going to have to proxy it in order to do in, um, encryption. Because I think Twitch has decided that you can't just send your password over the internet uh, decrypted. But that's fine. I can just have a computer that does the proxying for that. Um, Maybe I'll port a TLS library to something, but probably not a good idea. Uh, BX AX4202. Um, offset from origin of new file position. So we want to move CX0 and DX0 because we don't want... This is weird. It's returning the offset from origin in two registers. Is that segmented? Or is that a 32 bit value? I'm gonna assume that I don't care. Um, also clobbering BX here. FreeDOS is, I actually found a FreeDOS bug um, while trying to set it up on a machine. 
I found that like FreeDOS 1.2 works over serial, but FreeDOS 1.3 doesn't. And it's like, I don't, I don't know if I have the energy to start digging into why that is. You know, there's just, there's, there's just so much. Everything's broken. Uh, so if it's successful, we get CF clear. Um, and that, in that case, we will just return zero, I think. Um, should, okay, hang on a second. So, um, opened, so if it's clear, we opened and we have a new position in DX and AX. Um, and AX is the error code. Um, otherwise the error code is going to be, I guess we'll just return the error code. Um, wait a second. Carry flag set on error. Is this the same here? No, that should be set here. Okay, jump carry flag done. Um, unknown error. Unknown error seeking. I guess it doesn't actually matter if we have an error seeking. Oh, well. That's, it's, I'm gonna just have the seeking be optional. We'll just try. Um, ignore failure. We tried our best. <laughs> we tried. Um, and so now we want to return zero. So move AX zero, um, but we also want to move the handle. So the handle, the return um, DX AX. So we're going to move um, log handle BX and we'll just create um, our log handle down here. And I guess whenever we want to uh, log stuff now, we will just move BX with our log handle. Move DX AX. Yeah, and then we'll try and log it. So let's see how bad this, this breaks. All right. That the logging, like, okay, so obviously something's worked. Um, so let's go to desktop bot uh, drive C code bot. Um, it would be the bot test.log. So let's go to bot test.log. Um, and it's empty. That's a little bit confusing, but that's okay. Um, because we should be able to write to it. Um, why is that not writing? We move BX with the handle, which is log handle. Um, perhaps I need to store it earlier. Yeah. Perhaps BX has been mutated by, oh, what? I didn't call int 21 here. Um, not a great idea to not call stuff, but that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. Still nothing in the log. It's a little disappointing. Um, we definitely have the 
We definitely have the log handle now though. Um, but we can't, we're trying to write to the log and perhaps the, it's being consumed um, by this function here. Perhaps DOS is consuming um, the, the stuff that it's written. No, there's still nothing in the log. Okay. So what could be happening here? We move BX, which is the log handle. Um, we move AX. Um, and we move DX. We have CX, which is the length. <clears throat> but it's not writing to our log. Perhaps we need to close it successfully. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's queuing it or something. Um, let's just quickly see close file using handle. Um, so let's go over here. Um, we're going to move BX X. Um, obviously we're going to push BX and then we're going to pop BX there. We move BX with the log handle. Um, we move AX zero times three E O O. And then we do int 21. So that should at least update the file time. Instead it decides to mock me by, um, oh, whoa. No, that hung a little bit though. Was it doing something? It's a little bit strange. Um, just try again. So something is going strange here. Um, so let's start removing some of our smart code. Um, let's try and not seek to um, our at the end of the file, perhaps that's upsetting it. Um. Whoa, what? It's not writing anything. Um, hmm. We do have a file handle though, I think. Um, what we could do. Hmm. What we could do is just try writing to um, STD out. So like, um, yeah, what we'll do here is failed, succeed, and if there's a carry value, we will jump to six. Uh, we'll jump to succeed there, um, and then that should print stuff only if um, DOS has failed or something. That's not a good sign. Um, so write log, move BX one, move AX that. Um, so failed. Yeah, so let's see, let's go back to write um, file using device or handle. Um, the number of bytes to write if it's zero, it truncates, extends the file to the current position. Um, and the pointer is DS DX. Uh, 
Um, so DX, we move that there. We have CX. Um, and if the carry flag is set. So we have a DOS error code here, I guess. Um, let's try setting debug equals that. And let's jump over to, if I can remember the button to open up modules. Window, modules, what button is that? Just two, it doesn't work. Okay, log. Um, so let's try and do like a more complicated breakpoint here. Um, so we'll find out where we do our actual logging, which is write log. Um, and we will break, uh, we'll create a new breakpoint address. Um, we, we want a conditional breakpoint. Um, break it cursor, condition. Um, I don't know what condition there is. Carry flag equals one. I think, would that work? Unknown symbol CF. I don't know what the register is. Um, window, I guess we broke anyway. Um, C, all right. So let's just try editing. One, two, three. Um, break. Um, can we edit it? Yeah, so that would be C. Just set C then. We'll run again. C equals one. Let's just quickly open up the debugger guide and look at the conditions. Um, let's see. Condition. Arbitrary debugger expression. These include statements in the language. Um, so carry flag fl dot um, fl dot c so maybe we should try fl dot c um, fl dot c oh that worked all right. Um, so we can now just break that way. All right, so let's look at our um, CPU registers. We get error code six. Um, what's error code six? Invalid handle. Okay, let's see what handle we were passing. 3D01. Um, that's not a great handle if you ask me. That's probably not the handle we want. Um, so let's actually run just up to here. Um, so BX there is six, and then we bobber it with 3D01. So let's just look at what log handle is. Um, show um, address. Yeah. No. Show. I guess find. Yeah, show me log handle. Um, show me that data. Okay. Am I using OBS for streaming? Yes. Um, let's go back to source for this. Um, so data, 
let's do globals and let's look for a log handle. Yeah. No, it's not there. Uh, all right. Let's go back to move BX. So CPU registers. Actually, let's look at assembly mode. That might actually give us like what the variables are. So 3D01 is at that location. So why? Um, why is it saving 3D01? That can't be a real handle. Um, move log handle BX. Move AX. I mean, let's just try and debug that then. Let's run to um, here. So we have the file, we move AX, we move AX 3D01. Why? Because we have to create it. We didn't actually get the handle. I think. Um, move CX zero or what was it? Um, create file using handle, or was it open file using handle? 3D01, yeah. Yeah, okay, I see. Um, 3D01, and that should give us a handle. All right, let's try bot test now. Uh, it's gonna open it in the debugger. Um, just run it. Um, looks like it's frozen. Um, let's break it, receive new packet. So it's actually doing packet stuff, I guess. Um, let's break file exit. Um, let's just set debug to nothing. And then just run bot test. And see what happens. <gasps> It's writing stuff. And then hanging. <laughs> okay. Um, it's better than nothing. So why is that hanging? Uh, let's also just try writing it twice. Write log dot succeed not defined. Yeah, that's true. Good point, computer. Did that write to the log? That wrote to the log. Your vegetables were giant, were delicious except for the giant green bug on your broccoli. Did you get rid of the bug? Look, we now have an append log. Look, it's a log file. Did you put the bug outside? How did it die? What did you do? Um, so logging is done. Kind of. Um, we're still using SN printf a lot. 
Um, You just threw it out? What? I don't get it. You cooked the bug? Why would you do that? That's kind of cruel. Um... All right, so let's try moving the authentication code to logic.assembly. You didn't make, the, oh, okay, so someone else made them. So like before we actually connect this to Twitch, I have to, um, yeah, um, actually it's nearly ready to connect to Twitch. Well, kind of, um, I have to make it so it like skips the message of the day. So it doesn't show all my host name and stuff. So let's edit um, logic.nas. So this is our current logic loop. Um, a little bit pathetic if you ask me. Um, we have dispatch line and this will either log incoming and maybe change a byte for pinging. Oh. Or bug. Return, not ping. Yep. So we need to add a state machine for this. And that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go to on the wrong broccoli at the wrong time. Um, yeah. Also our assembly running thing here. Um, yeah, we push all the registers there and we pop all the registers and that's good. Move, yeah. This is also weird. You can't just push, what, what is this? Oh yeah, I set ES. That's how you set ES, that's weird. Um, you think accidentally eating bug is vegan? If it's accidental, yeah. I mean, you could argue in some like, <sighs> vegan stuff is such, um, not complicated, but, um, it's weird. Let's put finish there. Um, trying to put some, trying to clean up this code a bit. The vegan, please search your stomach and put you in the firing line. Yeah. Um, so we have our send packet, we have our continue. Hmm. What send? We don't have a way to return multiple lines from our thing. 
uh, which isn't good. Um, so send packet here. Um, well, no, we can return multiple lines. We just have to put them in a, uh, we return a packet. That's right. So we want to move the login message stuff away. So let's move this to our um, log.nas. Uh, no, not log.nas, logic.nas. Um, and we have our login sequence there. Uh, we also are going to need um, a variable to hold our current state, um, which we will make our current state. We might make it a bit mask, I guess. I don't know. You get big brained enough, do you kill bugs to not ruin your local ecosystem instead of putting bugs you found in your produce outside? I don't know, that's like the, that's the trolley problem, but for vegans, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so we have our login message, we have our, um, logic state. Um, can we initialize that to zero? I think BSS initializes to zero. I think, I think. Initialize data? Uh, I don't know. I guess it just goes in data. Um, on Linux and Windows, it goes to zero. Um, we should probably not rely on Whatcom doing that for us. Um, so we're just going to put that in data, I guess. Um, and let's set it to zero double byte, or is it D word zero? There we go. Don't worry, zero. Um, so by default, we'll be at state zero. Um, and if we're in state zero, um, we will move login message um, SI. And we'll remove um, length. We'll move. To, wait. Oh no. Um, this is actually going to have to be special cased because um, this isn't just the loop. This is um, this is done before we get any connection, like um, initiation. Um, so let's see, um, we're going to have to make a global called, um, well, SICX returns SICX, um, move SI login message, move CX login message length return. And we'll call, we'll call this not dispatch line, but um, first message or dispatch in it there. And so in our logic,
that's our log, not logic. Um, no, in our state. Um, we have state auth here. We have state in it. And what we will do is just call um, dispatch in it. And then send packet. Um, do we even need to do that? Yes, yes we do. So we've moved this to logic. Um, we have dispatch in it. First um, message sent. All right, let's see if this works. Dispatch in it not defined. That's right. Login message links not defined. That's right. And that seems to have passed the test. And so we're going to just say, um, not call outgoing, but we're going to, yeah, call log general. Um, and we're going to write, um, uh, in a message, we're going to write, um, sending login credentials. Um, we also need to figure out what happens if um, handle login failure, skip message of the day. Um, so that's probably next actually. Uh, but we also need to like move this to a file, this login message. Um, so let's do that next. Or we could put it in a variable or something. Um, Yeah, we'll put it in a file just for it. Um, and we'll actually make it just so um, that's the password, I guess. I don't know. Um, a bit tricky here. Um, we want to send a password and we also want to send the username and all that and that that just that block needs to be somewhere else so we're just going to have to read it from a file i guess and that kind of sucks but uh, i don't see a way around it um and then we'll just move um si there's log general si and cx, yeah. So um, init message and cx would be init message length. And what we're deliberately doing is not logging the outgoing stuff here. Um, Symbol log general. Uh, let's put that up here. Okay, so that's, oh yeah. We gotta move this down here. Um, 
We also need a watchdog slash timeout thing. I know I wrote that down here. But um, yeah, we're going to need a watchdog. I don't know if DOS has a watchdog. We might have to write that ourselves. All right, so it says up here, it should say, um, it doesn't say, it doesn't, it, it didn't. Uh, S-I-C-I, it didn't log my init message. Oh, I didn't do R-N. Oh, I did, I think. Um, let's just go look at our log thing again. Um, how are they writing new lines? Um, wait, I have to put RN. Um, so that would be, uh, Zero D zero A. So that is RN there. Why is that not working? Probably because I copied and pasted that. Um, holy cow. All right. Sending login credentials. Yay. And then the dispatch will have the state. But we'll have to work on that next. Um, our bot test is nine kilobytes. And it has all kinds of cool stuff. So what next? Um, yeah, so we have to read the auth code from a file. So we're just going to do that kind of the same way. Um, we're going to edit uh, drive C code, um, a bot test dot bat. Um, and we're going to set bot auth, um, bot auth equals bot auth dot text and then we'll just do kind of the same code um, also we have old underscore log here which isn't correct old auth um, let's take a little stretchy stretch break uh. What should we do if we don't have um we also need to signal to, um signal to quit um String stuff shouldn't be there. Why am I putting DOS comments there? Um, send quit. We need to send quit. So this should be D in it. Um, Return null if send buffer is empty. Um, let's just check that out. I, I don't know what that means. Um, send buffer. I don't know. Um, so we're going to have to kind of, I think if we, I think um, returning zero, 
Signal to quit, yeah. Um, so let's actually just do that now. So we're in state disconnect. Um, uh, and we're just going to do call dispatch um, quit and call send packet. And then quit out, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's go to what? Uh, what dot cpp? This is the wrong folder file. Um, so this should be in B9. So dispatch in it. We will put it below here. Dispatch um, last message shent. So let's see, we have init message, we're going to add quit message. Uh, now we can just log that, um, call uh, quitting time there. So that should be exit. Um, log general, and then we also want to log outgoing. Um, and then what should be, what should the quit message be? I think it's just quit. If we have to put our, do we have to know our own username? Um, because if we do, then that makes things a bit difficult. Let's see, quit. Um, I don't see, let's see. Quit. Yep, so let's just do, um, quit jukebot. Um, quit, um, and then we'll just write, um, I don't know what this program is called, but we'll just quite, um, we'll just write, uh, programming a DOS Twitch bot. That's pretty cool. Um, HTTP twitch.tv jukebot two. There we go. That's a nice quit message. Um, so now when we quit, we want to um, write that. Dispatch quit, yeah, all right, so. Um, dispatch, should be exit, dispatch um, quit. Dispatch exit. What's state quit? state and state and there um, move ax5 there we go hmm not ideal, not ideal if you ask me. Um, not sure exactly what just happened there. Let's check the log. Um, let's vim the log. It's already open. Um, by what process? Who's got the log open? Is it you? Sorry, who's got the process? Okay, here we go. 
So it logged all this junk. So obviously we failed during the logging stuff since it just shot its log load all over. <laughs> um, here we go. We've, we've put a negative value. Um, God. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's useful already, isn't it? Um, we see what's happened. Um, it printed all our memory. Isn't that nice? Um, let's just dump that. Let's run the, the test. Uh -huh. I wrote zero. Oh, I still found the bug, but that wasn't why it was frozen. Actually, let's edit the boss test file and go. Um, echo running bot. Echo running w make. So now we can like actually make sure that it's like, we know it's happening. All right. Bot test running bot. Okay. Um, it wrote quit. Nice. Nice. Um, but why did it quit? Oh, because the remote closed. Um, so let's add some stuff to our test server. Um, Um, test ping all done. Um, so how do we test quit? Oh shit. We shouldn't be sending quit if the remote was closed. That's not, that's not good. Um, we should only be sending that if dispatch line returns zero. What? What? Um, actually, let's go back to our bot.cpp and let's find out what happens. How do we know that it's time to um, quit? Receive new packet. So if the packet is empty, it also says that we have the quit thing there. Hmm. So we can't tell if we're quitting we don't know whether to clean up. Um, hmm. um, Alt X being a, a hard quit here is not great. Um, hmm. I want to inform the loop that um, I want to quit. And having this code here in the middle of this is a little bit strange if you ask me. Um, in fact, let's return a negative one if we want to quit to make this more of a suggestion. Um, that seems like it's going to break a lot of things, but it's necessary. Um, so if it's empty, we would disconnect. Um, actually, I think what we'll do, oh, this is getting really complicated. Um, we'll have a state quit. 
And if it's if it's negative one, then we will um, jump to state quit. Quit pressed, hit state quit. Check if quit requested. There, that should be fine, right? Um, why not? Unable to connect to host. Damn right you are. So this should only send the quit if I tell it to quit. Um, so it doesn't send quit there. But if we make it keep the connection open, um, so we just, instead of doing that, we just do, um, while true pass. So we just like deliberately hang there. And then we do alt X. It should send quit and clean up. And then it's going to take a while to clean up because the connection is still open. So that's good. We now have um, a way to handle quits, but we don't have a way to request quitting. Um, which is strange. How would we request quit? One thing I would think of is that um, state dispatch would return nothing. Um, but I think if state, if, uh, hang on, I think if state, dis, I think if dispatch line returns um, negative one and it's quit time, um, Yeah, so that would allow us to quit. Um, but also, if we have dot finish here. Yeah, so if we return zero, it will just um, not send a packet at all. Um, and that's good. Um, So this might be okay. We also have ASM run here, which jumps to state start. Um, then ASM quit, which is only called there. So what we could probably do, um, is put that there and ASM quit there. That seems fine, right? Um, let's see if that works though. And then if it does, we can start just making sure that we, um, you know, do proper, you know, don't clobber, etc. Nice. Um, so are we touching VP? No. Um, are we touching CX? Yep. Are we touching um, BX? Uh, we're not touching ES. It's a little bit weird that it was like that. Um, are we touching SI? Yeah, and DI, and DX, and BX. Um, and CX. 
So C, X, B, C, B, C, D, D, I, S, I. S, I, D, I, D, C, B. So that should be fine. Um, um, I think this would be epilogue. Prologue. There we go. Um, and then we'll just write that BX CX equals scratch. There we go. Pretty complicated code, but that's okay. Um, this code's a little weird. Um, if AX is not zero, then we skip that. Otherwise we put 10. Positive integer if bad. All right. Um, what? Should this be a return? Because otherwise it tries to return. Like that should be a return, right? Um, if we can't get a buffer. Yeah, maybe that's what this is talking about. The send buffer is empty. And we'll just return 10. And then send packet needs to, if it returns zero, what does send new buffer do? Send new buffer gives us the buffer, I think. No, it sends it and it gives a success. All right. Um, but yeah, okay. So we can return a positive value. Uh, yeah, so 10 there. Um, we probably don't actually need to, we can probably, since we're not using the stack here, we can just optimize this a bit. Um, so CX to AX and DX, we get the send buffer. Um, if it's zero, um, we, if it's not, hang on, if it's zero, then we will move AX 10 and return. Um, that should be jump, not equals. Otherwise, we will just jump to send new buffer there. There we go. If we don't. If we're not using the stack, then there's no point um, calling something. And that should return 10 if send buffer is empty. That seems fine. Um, I'm guessing that's fine. Um, let's see. Do we have any more of that kind of stuff um, where we call a function then return? Because that's kind of just tail call optimization right there. Um, doesn't look like it. Um, and I guess logic. Uh, 
Um, no, that looks so good. Oh, here we go. Call log out going. That should just be jump. Why not? Okay, so. Oh, and it's also here. Awesome. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so our stuff is all working. We're actually getting through quite a bit today. Um, we also have to read the auth from the file, which was the, that was the whole point. Um, so we're going to have to read stuff into a buffer. I think. Or into the packet. No, into a buffer. So um, let's grab a buffer. The password user. Oh, this is a bit tricky because at some point we probably will want to remember what username we have. Um, hmm. But let's not deal with that now. We'll deal with it later, if ever. Um, okay, so. We have our nice log there. Look at that. You can just tell what's happened, like a black box. All right. So we're going to have to allocate a buffer. Um, uh, how big is our binary? Just out of interest. Um, let's do duh bot.exe. 52k. That's actually not that bad. We're actually kind of still under the 64k limit. Maybe. Um, We have const data here and we have text here. Um, that adds up BSS 71A. I don't think BSS takes up space. Um, stack size, memory size. Yeah. So let's just try, um, I think it was in log that we had a buffer. So section BSS. Um, it's underscore BSS, yeah. Um, log buffer, we'll call this auth buffer. And let's just see how much that influences the file size. Uh, du bytes bot.exe 52270. So since BSS is kind of free, um, it's fine. It shouldn't be an extra 512, no. All right, so it's basically nothing. It just makes the BSS section larger. Um, I would like to know how much RAM this is using. Um, that's weird. Wait, it should say just in the memory map. Uh, oh, that doesn't count for malloc. No, this is um, a typical memory map. Um, if this is a, we have far data since we only have like three sec, I think we have two sections. We have code and data. Yeah. So that's maybe 128 K max. That's fine. Um, memory size 55168, so 50, 50, 55 kilobytes, kind of. All right. Let's see, bot test. All right, that works. So now we have to load it into our file. 
Um, uh, we also have to handle errors from dispatch in it. Um, uh, uh, um, okay, so dispatch in it. Um, if it returns CX of negative one, I'm trying to think of like what the return value would be. I would say CX negative one equals error. That's juke noises. Yeah. Um, we've only got like half an hour left, but we should be able to get this part done. Um, CX equals never to one equals error. Signal to quit, um, command to quit. We would have to add a test for that, which we probably will. Um, Sorry, I just blanked out there. I was thinking about, um, I guess next stream we will finally have to connect this to Twitch, um, even though it won't do anything. Um, we need that real world data. Or I guess I could gather it um, offline. That's probably a better idea. And then we can try connecting it to Twitch. So let's see, log.nas. We open a file and we handle the file. So we all, we only need to open file. So um, we also have the environment thing stuff here. We might just copy paste this. Also, this is not an integer. This is a void. A void open log. Oh no, it is an int. It is an int, isn't it? Um, so let's see, let's go to, oh, my, my head's cloudy. Um, and I don't want to take a break. Um, cause then I would have to edit it, but actually, you know what? I will take a little break, five minute break. Be right back. I'm back. All right. So let's grab an open log and let's put it in logic um, in our dispatch. So we're going to make a file called read auth. Um, and this is just going to uh, read out auth buffer. buffer. Um, now we're also going to have to have the auth buffer length. And we're also going to have our auth buffer actual length here as a word, I think. Yeah. I think it's res bytes to that. And then we will just move in our auth buffer. And then our auth buffer at length. Uh, call read auth. Compare read auth. Uh, this should return zero if it's a failure. Um, yeah, welcome back to me. Uh, doing the stretches. I might need to start taking more breaks during the stream, probably on that hour. Um, 
you know, pushing myself just doesn't seem to work. Um, obviously, like, wow, really? Pushing yourself doesn't work. Um, so we have read auth, auth buffer, auth buffer length. Um, it's just I have to pay for it in editing, but I guess it's better content overall, and the editing is not that bad. So we have our read auth here. Um, we push um, auth environment. And this will be um, bot auth. Uh, terminated by a null. Um, I don't know why we're messing with the stack pointer here. Um, don't need to touch that at all. That goes for the other code too. Um, why are we messing with the base pointer if we're not indexing into it. I guess for debugging it helps. Uh, whatever. So we're going to check the environment. Um, if we don't have the environment, we will return, um, I guess, five. Why not? Um, if we have an environment, then we'll um, try opening the file. Um, 3D01. 3D, open file using handle. So CX is not used there. CX, AX. Um, so AX would be the pointer. Uh -huh. in 21 um, if we couldn't um, open file then we just want to move ax um, zero no point you know if we're not going to actually use the error message there's no point having it I suppose we could have it like move ax one we're going to have positive error numbers Actually, no, we'll have negative ones. That way we can just all um, compare. If it's not zero, we will return. Um, actually, we should do um, success. Uh, and then we should do call, uh, jump log general. No, um, we have to preserve the return code, don't we? Uh, move bx ax, um, move ax bx. Then we just want to put a um, pause fail. Um, unable, unable to open a bot auth. I want us to make the same typo twice. Um, so auth fail message. And then we'll do the length there. Wait, does log general override AX? Log general. Oh yeah, it does. It uh, clobbers AX. Actually, we should push AX then and pop AX. Yeah, so that way that's fine now. So let's go back to our logic. Um, it is DOS and assembly. 
hello, welcome to the chat. Um, just trying to figure out. Um, so we have our auth fail message here. Um, if, it, if we actually can read the authentication file, we're gonna just jump to success. Otherwise we're gonna to have to save that and then we don't have to save that, fine. Okay, um, and then have and have file. Um, if it can't open the file, it will move that and jump to done. Um, then we have the file, we've got the handle. Um, and then we need to close the file. Um, probably don't care too much about the um, error result of that. Close file, move AX um, and BX would be AX. Um, and yep, so we Um, we have to read the file. So this is going to try and send garbage, I hope. Get and, um, what else have we not got? Auth fail then. Message length. Invalid combination of operands. So what line is that? 54. That's on log though, isn't it? That should be compare AX. Oops. So hopefully, Yeah, so that sent just nothing um, because it was able to open the file. Oh, and I was able to quit it. That's cool. Um, now what if there is no auth file, which there isn't, um, but it was completely fine pretending that it did have the auth file. Which is not good. Um, um, jump if less than, that should be jump if it equals, yeah. Unable to open bot auth, okay. So let's do vim bot auth test. I wrote teat. Um, I'm not a good typist. I'm still unable to open bot auth. Um, why is that? Bot auth dot text. Um, bot auth dot text. Rm bot auth. still unable to open it but but i have the file we we get the environment i think um 
bot underscore auth. Yeah, it does a bot underscore auth. And we're looking at bot underscore auth, yes. Um, let's just step through this in a debugger. Um, let's head on over to logic. Let's just run to here. All right. Let's look at our CPU registers. We get back a value. Um, we have that. Um, let's try opening the file. All oh, right. Dump not carry the read file. So it actually managed to open it. I was just checking it wrong. So it sent the wrong credentials. Oopsie doops. Um, so now it's time to actually read the file. Um, so AX is file handle. So we need to read, this is weird. I don't know how to read stuff in DOS. Um, read file using device or handle. So let's interrupt 3F. CX and DX is the buffer. All right. Um, yeah, I guess we will read a maximum of 512. Move BX, AX, uh, move DX, um, force buffer. And then we're going to move CX both a buffer at length. That seems fine. Um, and then we do int 3F. And then after that, we will do jump not carry close file. Um, otherwise, actually, let's just put the close file in done there. Um, wait, no, we'll jump close file. We'll, ju we'll just do done close. Just so we clean up any open file handles. Uh, so if we read file and if we have a carry, we will jump to done close. Here we go. Um, we will move AX to zero and we will jump to done close. Um, we'll move AX negative three. There we go. And then we will close. Ah, uh, but we have to set BX to be the buffer. Um, move BX AX. Set um, file handle bx equals file handle. All right, that's good. Um, and then we will go x negative three. Then we'll just jump to done close. Um, if we couldn't read it. Um, so we call auth buffer length. Um, uh, but that doesn't return the value we want because we clobber AX there.
Um, I'll just put DX there. I'll just switch DX and AX around. There we go. Um, that should be fine. So we do move AX negative three. Um, and then we just do done close. Um, actually, no, we'll just move DX negative three. Um, that's in the bad case. So we will we'll jump um, if there's not carry. Done close. And we'll set that to zero for success. Um, otherwise, we're gonna set it to negative three. That seems fine. This isn't going to explode all over me. So that's unable to open bot auth. Um, let's step through the debugger. Go to modules, logic, um, and we're just going to go to read file here and just run to that. Uh, window CPU registers. So that failed. Um, BX is six. So why did that fail? That failed with error five. Um, access denied. Bra. Bra. What do you mean access denied? <gasps> it's read only for some reason. I think. Um, bot auth dot text, bot auth dot text, edit bot auth dot text, hello world, save and exit, and let's try now. Just run. No, that's unable to open it still. Um, not great. Let's quit from DOSBox X and let's set the debug again. Um, sorry if you can hear people talking in the background. Um, that's just people, they exist. Uh, sometimes, sometimes that's just what, that's part of it. People do that. Um, we're gonna go into logic. I'm going to try and fix this in the next 10 minutes. Um, window CP registers X is six. We set our buffer and our length. All buffer length should not be three B five six. Um, what the hell? Oh, all buffer max. Um, let's just quickly set that to. We set to five twelve. That's not it. Um, Python three hex five twelve. You will not forgive me. That's that's okay. Um, let's set this to two hundred. Um, and IP is I don't know. That's the instruction pointer. So we interrupt and we get a return value of five still. And the carry flag. Um, and the DOS error code is. Access denied. Why? Why? Um, hang on, did I not set the, did I not set the open thing? Why am I getting a file thing if, um, open file using handle, um, write only. So I <laughs> opened it as write only um, yeah, that will make sense. Now let's try running it. Unable to open bot auth still. That's okay. Let's just quit out. Bot test. Um, let's go to log, no, logic. 
There's so many ladders. They're all over me. Um, and let's go to window CPU registers. So CX is correct. Still we get, um, we get an O, we get, which we're trying to read, um, probably because 3D00 is read only. What's 3F00? Um, 3F is read file and yeah. Actually, no, that's not a problem at all. Um, huh. Um, let's just try stepping through this because obviously um, something has gone wrong. Um, let's restart the program. Let us head back to um, Head back to our famous um, logic. And let's hit this. So we have the environment. Um, let's read the memory at um, DX. Not exactly what we want. Um, data memory at the X. There we go. Bottleworth.txt. Um, so we do 3D00. Let's look at our registers now. And we get a file handle back that is seven. Um, that couldn't there should be um, I guess that's, that should be could open file. Um, so we do read file. We set DX to the auth buffer, auth buffer max to the size. We do three F O O with BX prop. Am I tripping or did BX go from seven to six? Hmm. I don't know about that. In fact, this should probably be here. It kind of looks like it's maybe, no, it shouldn't. Yes, it should. All right, I think that's it. Um, I think it was trying to write using the log file descriptor, um, which is a little weird. So now it's, we do sending login credentials, but it's not sending, um, it's not sending it. Um, is that because I'm not returning? No. If it's success, then it should be able to move SI auth buffer and auth buffer length. Oh, I'm not setting the return value to auth buffer length. All right. So move AX DX. Um, and we're going to get the number of bytes red. And we're going to just store that as um, auth buffer length. Uh, AX. Let's run bot test. All right, so we have a failure in my test because um, it's not the correct string. So let's see what we're expecting. Um, Edit bot auth. So we should be writing the following. Um, pass 
as word user jukebot zero jukebot nick jukebot file save exit and that is not what it wants because the length of user is too much because I forgot the zero that makes sense Hey, so we've moved our authentication stuff to a separate file. So now we can delete this. Um, but the last thing we're also going to do um, is just make sure that the error checking works if the file doesn't open. So what we're actually gonna do here is just make this negative four and then we're going to have to quit out if that does not work um, because right now the thing that's making it quit is our test uh, but instead our dispatcher should be quitting it so let's go back to our bot uh, no not our, our uh, state file and let's go to, I think it's state in it, state start. Okay. Um, so we compare if it's zero and if it's not, we should jump to state end. Oh, we're only comparing it there as well. So we should be doing two comparisons. There we go. And that passes through the value. Um, so if we go to our um, state thing now, uh, our bot, our log, our logic, and we set that from, if we find the to-do I wrote, we set that to zero. then it should be correct. Yikes, not yikes, but nice. Um, so we have the auth code in a different file. So the next thing to do is um, connect to Twitch, probably over a VPN. Um, work on code for login fail. Skip message of the day if it includes sensitive data. Um, and then we have, we we'll probably need a watchdog um, because if like our internet goes down or something, um, it's just gonna time out. Um, and I'm not sure how that's gonna be handled. Probably not, right? Um, well, I suppose the network side would. Um, if it times out. Hmm. We need to do a timeout test. Um, and then. Yep, we're getting done. We also have to merge our test.py. Um, so if we vim test.py, we have this code here that checks that the packet stuff works by sending various sizes. It would be good to adapt that into our current test suite. Um, because what we do is we run our input test, we send a long packet, but we also ask for a certain amount of packet. Um, so we need to kind of do that again, but prefix it with some test commands. Um, but we're getting there. Um, so that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, um, the DOS is for life.
Um, having a file that just logs is good though. Um, edit bot test.log. I mean, we have all this stuff here. That's pretty cool. Um, it should even have our errors. Um, unable to open bot or stuff like that. So that's it. See you all later.